Hello everyone and welcome back to Commu Black Dragon in the Gentle Kingdom. And last time uh, Benio was attacked by an avatar and now she's in the hospital with uh, minor injuries as far as we know. So let's see what happens next. Huh? Yukiko-san has joined the chat. Let's see here. Haven't se haven't seen DM in a while. Seven hundred seventy-seven suns is gone too, so it's just us. That happens sometimes. That's right. I saw people freaking out over an explosion in Central Park. You live in the new heart in real life? No, but I had to run an errand there yesterday. Apparently, it was an explosion, but a broken streetlight and a ruptured water main. But this was right after the other two explosions, and someone reported seeing a black monster nearby. Yukiko san has joined the chat. Hey there! Hi! Hi, hi! Thanks for, thanks for coming! Huh? Is Triple Seven Sun still gone? I haven't seen the M son f uh, for a few days either. They must be busy. What did the M son do in real life again? Salary man, software company. They're probably making him work overtime before release or something. Yukiko san, weren't you a student? That's right, still working hard at it. Speaking of which, there wasn't a third one. There wasn't a third one. Oh, explosion. To be honest, I was kind of hoping there would be. You mean an explosion? Yeah, that. They do keep saying they were probably accidents. A bunch of people claimed responsibility though. Aren't they all just twisting it to suit their own causes? Bombing an abandoned building out of town to express anger at the government? No one does that lol. Actually they caught one guy lying. Some tw tween boy got arrested for posting bomb threats on an image board. Maybe the cops know something they aren't telling us. Conspiracy theories. Yukiko's son loves double secret plots and organizations. Eh? But aren't they possible? There are real conspiracies. There was that one uh, one American president. I forgot his name, but it was obvious. MMR? No, JFK. So what about Triple Seven Son? After all those group deaths, not seeing him for a while is kinda, you know. Don't say that, lol. Group deaths? Triple Seven Son's kinda cold, but he's a good person. DM son says some funny things too. Yeah, he does, lol. It's just not as fun without everyone here. Yeah, I know. Why don't we meet up offline when they come back? We still haven't done that. Offline? Sounds good. It's almost summer too. That's right, summer. I'm gonna have fun this year. Ah, uh, I can't wait. Takikawa Benyo runs. I thought she's in the hospital. She breathes heavily and runs without looking back. The lights in the air-conditioned hallway lost power a while ago. Only the flickering emergency lights show her where to go. Maybe they show us now what happened before she was hospitalized. It's well past midnight and dawn is approaching. The sleeping hospital is as quiet as an abandoned building. Oh no, she's in the hospital right now, okay. Benyo's footsteps and breathing are the only things disrupting that silence. Up the stairs, she runs. She runs, she runs. A few hours ago in Takikawa Benyo's room. The first thing she saw was a scarlet glint in its eye. Benyo flung the curtain open. It was crouching on the veranda less than a meter away, behind a single pane of glass. A sharp body far larger than a wolf or a tiger, it was over two meters tall, no, closer to three, a red beast colored like the burning scarlet of fresh blood. It was so close that Benio couldn't move or think, like a zebra staring at a lion. Lion? Lion. Benio's face was reflected in its single vividly shining eye. It looked like a four-legged carnivore. It was much smaller than the giant or the dragon, but it definitely wasn't fragile. If the giant was next, this was a sword. But this was still the same kind of creature as the giant, just as tigers and leopards are both carnivores. An illusion covered in steel. She needed to call the dragon. Her will dissolved from the shock, but the primal impulse ordered her. Her survival instincts, they fought against death, against her terror, making her call the nameless black dragon. At that moment, 
everything in her vision tilted. Trees, concrete, steel, everything all at once. Her TV, her pots, the desk she liked, her stuffed animals, her fridge, the top half of her alarm clock. The cuts run down through the room and into the floor. That floor... It fell, it fell, it fell. Everything in the world slid down into the abyss. The walls, the floor, the support pillars, the furniture, all of it. The desk was cut in half, then into fourths before it hit the ground. The floor and the carpet were both torn into eight pieces. The ceiling split into fifteen chunks as it fell, making it impossible to tell what was what anymore. <laughs> There was no time for her to scream. As she shook off her fear, her body moved on its own. Something besides thought helped her cling to life. Takekawa Binyo ran. She breathed heavily and just ran without looking back toward the front door. Her entire room fell to pieces beneath her feet. Just as she rushed out the door, Binyo's entire room collapsed behind her. What is that? What is that? And let me guess, what is that? Called it! It was definitely the same type of creature as the one they saw on the hill. Why was it here? Why had it come for Benio? She had no idea what was going on. She didn't relax for a second, since the scarlet monster could be right behind her. She would have caught the dragon immediately had people not started gathering. One of her neighbors had called the police, who arrived shortly thereafter. Benio was taken to a university hospital in an ambulance. The Scarlet Beast didn't pursue her. The police questioned her and the doctors examined her. Both her parents called her, so she had to talk to them. Kuchin and Saho also texted her after seeing the news report and freaking out. Once everyone had calmed down, the doctors told her to stay overnight. On the way back to her hospital room, she received another call. From Akito. In all the commotion, she'd completely forgotten about them. Hi, this is You alive? You sound fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Of course. Well, a little. What do you mean it's like we're friends? We are friends. Friends. I've got nothing against it. That's right. の上で見たのとは違ってたけど、もっと両方足で猛獣みたいでなんか赤くてそいつが何したのかわからないけどいきなり部屋が全部崩れて私逃げてもう<笑> Well, if it's a pancake, no, at least you don't starve. Hey, 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 hey. Listen closely to what I'm about to say. Get all your stuff together now so you can run away. If you want to live, do as I say. And now, that's why Benio is running. She followed Akito's instructions and waited until the hospital was quiet. She didn't have much on her, so it took no time at all to pack. Just some volleyballs and the music player she had in her pocket. Everything else was lost in the rubble. <laughs> if you don't want to die, if you value your life, do as I say. She's never heard those threats outside of television dramas or novels. She never thought anyone would say that to her. But tonight, she can't just laugh it off. That burning eye, her room being shredded, that huge metallic red cigarette on her veranda. Because she saw that thing. <laughs> she rushes up the stairs, turning on the landing. 
Another call. Her heart almost stops. She may act tough, but she's scared. Just remembering the Scarlet Beast makes her legs shake. <laughs> it's Kagome, not Akito. She speaks to Benio like a human stabs on a cockroach. But how? Kagome hangs up on her. She doesn't care about Benio's concerns. She checks the time on her Bengal watch. Four minutes before 3 a.m. Four hours earlier in Akito's room. What are you talking about? I just called Benio at the hospital to make sure she's okay. That's what Kagome said after I told her what Benio told me. Two things. First, the scenario writers and someone who sets traps, I think. Second, 99% of the world's writers hate you now. <laughs> she simply laughed. The witch doesn't fear making the world her enemy. Anyway, Benio was attacked by a scarlet beast. What do you think that means? This woman lacks important human traits, many of them. You don't have to explain that part. Once she had her fill of spitting poison at me, she got back on topic. Such a selfish witch. An enemy of the dragon, it's probably the same kind of being. The scarlet beast that attacked Benio. The giant that appeared on the hill. The invisible monster that fought Yuruko. And the black dragon. It would make a lot of sense if they were all different categories of the same thing. Illusions of steel that move when humans' wills are loaded into them. Human wills, not humans' wills. Kinda reminds me of something. There must have been people on that hill too. It's hard for us to control the dragon when we can't see it, considering how fast the giant on the hill reacted. Whoever was controlling it must have been able to see the fight. Probably on the roof of the building next to ours. Texts from Mayuki and Uharu-san, they're both fine. I saw the news, nothing happened to me, such a busy night. Haru didn't seem to realize the gravity of the situation, she's just like that. Nothing's happened to me yet, could the attacker be connected to what happened on that hill? Mayuki seemed both unsettled and excited. Both texts said, is Benio okay, at the end. I sent the reply, she's fine. I had no way of contacting Izawa Shu, I should have forced him to tell me his number. How would they know who Benio is? Never mind, we can figure that out later. Kagome called Benio a trap, bait for the rest of us. If the Scarlet Beast had really wanted to kill Benio, she wouldn't have gotten away as easily as she did. This was probably a trick to lure out the others connected to the dragon, they let Benio live on purpose. If we blindly went to visit her, they'd learn who we all were. Even assuming Benio is bait, there's two things I don't understand. Why would they attack us? People were trying to kill us all at that very moment, but we had no idea why. Not many situations feel worse than this. Kagome reclined on the sofa, annoyed, and felt strangely relieved by the fact that Kagome remained haughty no matter how pressing the situation was. Why do you seem so upset by all this? You're the one mentally violating me every day. That's all it takes to piss you off. 
それで言ってみろ私が予想できない質問を飽き人ができるなど年に一度もないぞ I mean with a giant and the scarlet beast If we made a single mistake, we'd all be dead. No, even if we'd performed flawlessly, the odds were still against us. We don't stand a chance against these people. It's easy to take a life. Everything someone did in the time they were alive and everything they could possibly have done in the future. Taking all of that away from someone requires only the tiniest hint of ill will toward them. I remember that red color. A rusty smell, a scarlet a tinge spreading across the concrete, the warmth of life flowing through my fingers like sand, a nauseating weight in my arms. He never realized the price of his actions and he never imagined the weight of the result. Kagome didn't have to tell me that, I knew it far too well. The steel illusions have tremendous power, it'd be strange if no one went crazy after obtaining it. This is getting so stupid. The witch remarked me with a crescent moon smile. True. I took a deep breath. A small fire burned in my rusty heart. Whoever we are up against, they don't care about us. I don't know for sure if they want to kill us, but they definitely don't care if we live or die. So, there never was a choice. What I need is the strength to pull the trigger, an unwavering will like a hard, sharp knife. A gentle word. This kingdom that's far too gentle to stop unreasonable things from happening. But so what? It's the only spell I have to chant. Death, defeat, annihilation, resignation. I can't let myself allow any of that. Do you think it's watching Benio right now? Which means we don't have many options. This has nothing to do with me. So the rest of it? Anyway, Kagome-san, asking all us normal people to live a crazy harsh life like you just isn't going to work. <laughs> the witch seemed happy as long as she could insult me. Of course! Not after all of this, would you feel right abandoning her? Understood that it'd be easier to cut her loose, but being a villain takes talent. It's easier to be alone, helping others with their problems always causes more trouble, but... Shut up, I don't listen to you. A sweet breath tickled my earlobe as she pressed against my back. Then appropriate softness almost made me forget the situation. If they are after all of us, I can't write this off as someone else's problem. I did have a reason. It was a really stupid reason, but it was a reason. I hate unfortunate women. Women who have fallen down and continue to plummet. Women who might have something taken from them. Women who are petrified and can't move forward anymore. Just thinking about a woman whose face and name I know being in that situation irritated me. That was why. I chose to dive into the biggest trouble I've ever seen just for that reason. I knew I was doing something stupid. On this gentle kingdom there are no allies of justice like Binyo wants, or heroes like Mayuki talks about. It was a given that I won't be able to accomplish anything, but so what? The witch couldn't have been any more expressionless. You're very clear about that. Even when she was being cooperative, Kagome lacked basic human morals. I like something more peaceful with less dismembering. Kagome lied down on the sofa as if this was all boring. And now? 
standing on a high roof in spring just before dawn chills us to the bone. From the top of this old apartment building, we look across the roofs of the various wings of the university hospital. Why are you wearing a maid outfit then? You think walking around town in that get up doesn't make you stand out? <laughs> yeah, that's right. For some reason, Kasukabaharu is yet again wearing a maid outfit. The mega boob maid must not be underestimated. Fifteen minutes before 3 a.m. Haru and Mayuki came right on time, even on short notice. We wander back and forth between the edge and the middle of the roof. I have no way of calling him. Like what exactly? I choose, I choose not to think about that. Anyway, as I explained before, another monster is targeting Benio. Whoever controlling it is after us. The group connected to the Black Dragon. They're probably watching Benio right now since she's the bait. So we need to retrieve Benio from the hospital. Get her in our custody and shake off her silence. Mayu-chan, this is real life. Yeah, somewhat. Reality isn't like a drama, just saving her won't be the end of it. The harder things are, the longer it drags out. She makes a troubling point. The mega boob maid can also be poisonous sometimes. Depends on who we are up against. Tonight's plan is full of holes. If our enemies are serious, there's plenty they can do even after we retrieve Benio. For example, if they take her parents hostage and order us to show ourselves, would Benio be caught blooded enough to stay hidden? Even God would be hard pressed to protect someone properly. There's nothing as powerless and worthless in stories as an ally of justice that isn't being protected. Hopefully they'll have some morals. Probably a vain hope. We're talking about. Kagome planned out the details for us. I was worried what the witch might come up with, but in situations like this, Kagome is as reliable as the devil. We are all set. How did you know this building would be the perfect spot anyway? That's really not a phrase people use in their daily lives, you know. S I stop there since she might kill me otherwise. Okay, time to get the dragon. Hi, the maid raises her hand. I guess that's fine. Does it matter who calls it? Mayuki folds her arms and nods dramatically. Alright, maid, give it a shot. I didn't mean anything perverse. Oh, cool! According to Mayuki, this is version 2.0 of her spell. I glance at the paper, but I can't spot the differences. Jeez, I guess she really is no taco girl if she cares about trivial meaningless stuff like that. Haru takes the note and quickly strikes a pose. The maid mage chants her grand spell. Fungry, 
暗黒竜王召喚呪文あーそこはちゃんとルビでアルファオメガと読まなければダメです<笑>気合を入れて世界を貫く感じで<笑>それってどんな感じついさっさと行け時間の無駄だ。I didn't say anything. With her eyes pushing me forward, I grab onto the dragon's black hand, almost lying down on it. Only one of us can go due to space. We are trying to retrieve Benio, and fitting one person on each of the dragon's hands is the best we can do. For sure, this is okay. I won't fall off or anything, right? Probably. ちっちゃい The dragon rushes like the wind toward the edge of the roof. Its enormous body leaps far higher than should be possible. The black dragon fades into the darkness of the night as it skips from roof to roof. The dragon's gravity controlling magic gives it this maneuverability. The maid, Kasuka Baharu, said she was good at controlling this kind of movement. When the maid controls it, the dragon changes from a lizard crawling on the ground to a vibran racing through the sky. I can't say anything during this acceleration, but there's a lot less shaking than I expected. My hair flies up in the wind, the lights of the city below melt together as they flow by. I look down from the dragon's hand higher than any rooftop, it's more dazzling than I'd imagined. We enter hospital grounds, landing on a roof with a red cross on it, then we jump to the normal wing where Benio should be. A nearly silent landing. Bino's already waiting for me on this barren rooftop. Your jaw's hanging open, close it. Not that it's an unusual reaction when a dragon falls out of the sky without warning. Binu seems annoyed that she didn't think of it herself. The dragon holds out its right hand. Grab on, we are leaving. We talked about that on the phone already. Details later. She's good at adapting quickly. あ、でもこれならわざわざ秋人くんたちが来てくれなくても私が召喚して逃げ出してれば。We're here in case they 
Before I can finish, light appears a blue swirling light just above the power substation. We know exactly what this means. That's the shining gate connecting to a place where monsters sleep. In case they come out and attack. So much for a clean getaway. Binu climbs onto the hand, lying down and holding on. The dragon pulls us up toward its chest. <laughs> the scarlet beast appears from the blue-white light. The first thing I think of is a knife, a sharp pointy slit like a bladed weapon. It's shaped like a canine, more slender and delicate than the giant or the dragon, but with its own sense of danger. The scarlet hound appeared above the power substation. Its single red eye glares emotionlessly at the pitch black dragon like glass. I don't want to let us go easily. The witch's negative pr predictions always seem to come true. I get out my phone. I send the text message I prepared. I hear the sound of a key turning in a lock somewhere. The arms folded up at the base of the hound's limbs start to unfold. They look like insectoid arms, a praying mantis arms in particular. Their tips glint like a surgical scalpels. The red hound swings its right blade about 30 centimeters to the side. Suddenly, the roof shifts. The water tower, the door leading to the stairs, the steel pipes, the metal fencing, all of it slides diagonally down together. There was no way that arm could have reached all of those objects, and yet it's as if an invisible blade cut through all of them. Everything within a few dozen meters has been cut in half, and is sliding down. This is more than just unprovoked. No mercy, no warning. They planned on killing us from the very beginning. But... There is a sense of hesitation in the hound's red eye. The beast's invisible blade that was its first and most powerful attack. A flash running along a trajectory through both the dragon and the people connected to it. However, both of them and the dragon are unharmed. The blade wasn't lacking in power, it did just cut the roof in half. It only swung one blade less than a meter, that was enough to bisect all in its patch. It's as if only the dragon managed to dodge that attack. Some part of that silhouette emits a rumbling howl. Looks like we hurt their pride. Another magical sword, the invisible blade runs along the roof. Walls are torn apart, the fence is cut down, the water tower is bisected. Humans rely on vision for almost 80% of their sensory information. Even in a battle of steel monsters with tremendous power, because people control them, having an invisible weapon gives them an unmistakably huge advantage. Once you get within range, those magical blades can cut through steel as if it was water, invisible, hence invincible. The Scarlet Town puts all it has into a second attack. It cuts along three lines at once, doing far more damage than the first slash. Horizontal and vertical cuts take away even the dragon's escape route, engulfing it in death. The only evidence that those blades of death exist are the deep gashes in the roof as it gets torn apart. Since we can't see them, there's no way to avoid them. Humans can't do anything about that. The dance of blades melting into the air slices all parts of its prey without a sound, without allowing it to sense its impending death. Or so it thinks. The black dragon holding us to its chest harmlessly deflects all three blades. The scarlet down's hole sounds more like anger than shock. Those proud blades should have cut us into shreds, but they can't reach us or the dragon through its black arms. Ten points cut through the world, the atmosphere grates, darkness expands. A black shield. Darkness gushes out from the dragon. The shield of gravity won't allow the invisible blades to touch us, just as it sealed us off from the gi giant's hellish blaze. The text I sent was to Mayuki, telling her to deploy the shield. Five people are connected to the dragon, each is loaded into it and carries a part of it. We each have our roles, certain things we are more or less suited to. Surprisingly, Mayuki is best at using the dragon's shield. The rest of us can do that too, but not as efficiently. It's keeping us safe for now. How are the dragon's stats looking? 
What's that? Since we're connected to the dragon, we can see several v variables and data points about its condition. Technically, they're appearing in our minds rather than our vision. I have no idea what most of them mean, but one value I exactly understand. The dragon's energy. Powerful magic does take a lot of MP. The dragon's magic points. It was in the hundreds when we summoned it, but appearing in our world lowered it a little. Even coming into our world exhausted somewhat. We don't know if losing all its MP will make it stop moving or go back into the blue light. Either way, we won't be able to fight anymore. Deploying the black shield is causing it to lose MP blindingly fast. I'm too far away from Mayuki and it's night time. She can't see what's going on here. My text taught her to put all energy into the shield. Since we don't know how strong the enemy is, we can't risk anything else. It would help if Mayuki was here, but we can't fly away with Benio while we are focusing on defense. On defense. Plus, there are people controlling that Scarlet Beast and they're probably nearby. We don't want to give them any more information than we have to. If the dragon runs out of MP, the shield will vanish. Without it, the hound's blades will cut through us effortlessly. We can't block those things ourselves. So? Okay, let's do this. Do you want to die? Now get ready. The silence of indecision. Because you're cute! I can't hear her muttering very well through the roar of the black shield. He's going to move before we go down. Don't miss your chance. Okay, Benio. She answers without hesitation. You don't have to get that excited. I reply casually, then turn my attention to the enemy. The dragon gets ready. It twists its four limbs as if ready to pounce at any moment. The hound moves first. Above our heads a sharp silhouette passes over the enormous moon. It's much faster than the giant on the hill and bright red as it flies. An attack from the sky to tear us apart, not with invisible blades but with its own arms and claws. It may look like it's going overboard because it's certain of its victory, but in reality it was a careless decision, impatience prompted by the inability to even scratch the dragon before. As the hound charges down, the dragon roars. The hound accepted our challenge. The dragon can't keep the shield fully deployed forever, so it's clear who would win a long endurance fight. Isawa's missing and Mayuki and Haru can see us. Binyo and I are the only ones operating it. We are not as powerful or as nimble as before. An incomplete dragon, there's only one way to make up for that gap in ability. Bluff and make the hound give up its own advantage. Binyo shouts. No matter how fast it is, when you know it's coming, you can do something about it. The dragon's fangs tear into one of the blades moving at hurricane speeds. The hound's right blade arm comes clean off. The scarlet hound loses its balance and falls. It rolls along the roof and crashes into the fence. Now we run. We just caught it by surprise. If we keep going, we'll run out of energy before it does. Binyo looks at the remaining MP again and gulps. We can't feel the red warning lights, not much longer until it's empty. Let's go. We turn our backs to the hound and run, then we leave. <laughs>